Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast with Matt and Janita. Today's guest, we have Nathan Hazen, who's actually my brother. Going to tell us a little bit about himself, a little bit about some life experiences and some perspective he has. So without any further ado, we'll turn it over to Nate. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me here today. I really appreciate it. You know, it's good to be here. This is awesome. Thank yeah. you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, uh, Obviously, I know a little bit about your story, but I'll let you kind of tell it, you know, as far as your interests, what you're about, you know, and uh, guess what message you'd have to pass on to others. So, um, obviously, you know, you know where I grew up, grew up in Moline, um, you know, grew up there for uh, 15 years of my life, you know, uh, from there, went to Marion, uh, finished out my uh, adolescence uh, through there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, and then, uh, from there I started to, to really decide what I wanted to do in life. Uh, I went to college, uh, at Kirkwood, uh, for fire science. From there, I volunteered through various fire departments. Yep. Uh, three different ones. I, I, yeah, three different ones. You know, and that was an experience all in itself, you know. I bet. And then... You know, while I was going to college, I was working full time in the car business, yep. going to school at nights full time, you know, and just kind of grinding, trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do. Yeah. From there, uh, I realized that, uh, you know, the car business isn't all that bad. Yeah. Myself, yeah, it's been good to us, us as a family and everything, our father being involved in it, as well as our uncle. And yeah, it's kind of been a family deal. Yeah, you know, from Matt being my boss to uh, a good colleague, mentor to to gain a lot of knowledge from, you know, I actually enjoyed it. You know, I was started off in detail, detailing cars when I was 15. I was going to high school. Yeah. I was a porter. I got in trouble. <laughs> Went back to detail. <laughs> yeah. As most porters do, you get in trouble squealing tires and... Jacking around. Yeah. And then, you know, went back to being an internal service advisor or a porter and then an internal service advisor. And I guess from there is probably when it really sparked my interest because now I'm going to be dealing with customers, you know. Yeah. Uh, at the time, uh, Keith let me, you know, my, our dad let me, you know, work with customers on Saturdays. So it made it, you know, kind of a, a challenge, you know, I had, you know, the other people that were experienced and menu sales was the biggest thing, you know, yeah. to save the customer money and give them a good value. So, and then we would get spiffed off of that. And my goal was to every time beat them on beat the Saturday. Yeah. And so, you know, I guess that's what kind of started to fuel my drive for customer, you know, you know, uh, appreciation, customer loyalty experience. I don't know how, you know, yeah. you know, rename it. I just wanted to be the best at giving the customers a great value and yeah, and a good, good product. Being, being competitive and that, you know, I guess challenging yourself against everybody else, you know, and I guess uh, trying to beat them at the customer service game and also, you know, like taking care of people. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. And then from there, uh, left uh, that dealership and then was a, a lot boy. And I guess the hard work and dedication from there, you know, the Mike was my boss at the time. And I remember it was scorching hot outside. You know, summertime of 18, hey, I would be outside, you know, I like being out yeah. there. And it had all these uh, BMWs lined up. And he said, hey, go out there. Clean all those wheels on those BMWs. And I was looking at them and I was like, and these things really aren't that dirty, but you know, hey, it's something to do. It's summertime. I'm going to be in the sun. Yeah. And so I went up there, cleaned all those wheels, went back to Mike and I said, Mike, I'm all done with those cleaning those wheels. What else you got for me? He said, oh, there's no way you can be done cleaning all those wheels. Yeah. 
I'm done, man. Come, come take a look. You know, uh, as I'm beat red, you know, I look yeah, like a lobster. So <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he went out there, you know, kind of, you know, it was kind of like dad bringing his kid, you know, yeah. on a different day, you know, dragging you dragging out, out there. Hey, let's take a look, see what you're doing. And was real appreciative of the fact that, you know, I can stay on task, you know, hey, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do right. and, you know, not have to give me a whole lot of direction. Right. And I looked at it as my boss, you know, and I didn't really look at it this way when I was younger, but my boss is kind of like my customer. You know? I got to make sure that I'm delivering, you know, what I say I'm going to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. expectations are exceeding them. Yep. And so... Then from there, I got an opportunity to, to be an internal service advisor again. And then there was a spot that opened up in the truck shop. And I guess that's probably where uh, I really grew on customer service, you know, and getting the interaction. I guess that's probably what I needed because I was just as wild as the contractors that would bring in their big old diesels. Yeah. And from, from there, it was just, it kind of was inspirational for me. You know, I got to learn a lot from Spud, who was a technician there. Yeah. He kind of showed me the ropes and kind of gave me a better, better understanding of cars. I mean, even when I was younger in detail, I'd roam around and look to see what was going on because it just, yeah, I was just infatuated with it. Inquisitive. Yeah, asking why. What's this? What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even my dad would probably tell you that, you know, that's <laughs> the way I've been all my life. Yeah. And I look at it this way, um, you know. That was really kind of the the major stepping stone in, in my career. It's where you kind of we fell kind into of, your own and like made it your own and kind of got a chance to prove yourself out by yourself rather than underneath, you know, somebody else's supervision and whatnot. Yeah. And I was still doing my night classes and then I was done with college and then I got to decide, okay, hey, do I want to pursue the fire service career? Or do I want to stay in the car business? And at the time, uh, the car business was, you know, very um, good to me, you know, mm -hmm. as far as pay. I was surrounded by a good group of people. Yeah. And so I thought to myself, well, I can, right at the moment, I can make more money out of the car business right. rather than going and doing the fire service thing. So I thought, well, you know what? I can have the best of both worlds. Decided to continue my volunteer career yep. uh, until the age of 32. And then got out of it because, you know, family and, and just my work schedule. Um, but uh, so then after I left out of, you know, the, the truck shop manager, I got to go be a service advisor mm -hmm. at a different uh, dealership, you know, with yourself and Jamie and Dave and yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, from there, then it really grew. So I kind of took, you know, before I was back and I, you guys called it the hole. You yeah. Know, back in the back. <laughs> You're back away from all of us. Yeah. So. Back there inhaling diesel fumes and everything else, you know. And so I decided that, you know, there is probably where I guess I would have molded my myself and molded my skills, my customer service yeah. skills, um, you know, sales, just everything in general. Learning how people work. Um, after I left out of there, I decided to go to a different dealership and, you know, it was closer to home. And I guess from at that moment, it was probably where I would say not necessarily the peak, but it was it was quite up there. Um, and really was at that place for quite a while until I got kind of, I'll say it, screwed over a little bit. Yeah, you, know, I just, you were getting burnt out on a lot of things, working a lot of hours, and then they started jacking with your pay, and it's not like you weren't working any harder on things. Yeah. As they started messing with it, and you're like, well, it's starting to be not worth it anymore. Yeah, and I guess from there, I really realized that your boss, I mean, it needs to be an advocate for you. I mean, I was doing twice as much in sales as the rest of the guys. I mean, I got so busy, I had a secretary, I was had people lined up to see me, you know, right. it was kind of like a carnival ride, you know, in my head, I was thinking, you know, I don't yeah. know how else to describe it. You know, people were just wanting to, to deal with me because I was a man of my word. You know, if I'm, 
I guess I, and that's what I was thinking about is not going to bullshit you, you know? Yeah. And I'm sorry if you're not going to like what I have to say, but at least, you know, where you stand, I stand right. and you have clear expectations of what I can give you. Yeah, absolutely. Telling people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear, even if it is bad news, trying to make it palatable. But yeah, if you weren't there to play games, you weren't there to bullshit, you weren't there to mess around. Not at all. So yeah. that's what set you apart on it. Yeah, and and I truly enjoyed enjoyed it. Yeah. So uh, after I did that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go into manufacturing. And what I really realized is that that there was quite a bit of similarities from manufacturing to uh, the, the car business. You know, you're still working on, you know, machinery. You're still working, dealing with other people, contractors and everything else. Yeah. Uh, even at an operations level, it was still kind of that way. But as being a supervisor now, there's, you know, you're setting up stuff, following up on repairs, just like technicians and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just trying to see where your process is or, or you can improve to to get the most out of your day. Yeah, managing processes yeah. and efficiencies on things. You know, and probably managing some goofy ass people along the way too. <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of good people there. Uh, the The one thing about it is it's different. You know, uh, there's 250 different personalities. You know, 400 on days. I mean, it just it's kind of all over the place. You know, and I looked at it this way. You know, I. Yes, over the years is what I found that I truly enjoy the most is I enjoy training people. Yeah. You know, I enjoy teaching people. I enjoy making sure they succeed. You know, I'm only yeah. as good as my team. Right. And some days that is a challenge. You know, I didn't yeah. take it because I want to be somebody's boss and, and point them around and everything yeah. else. I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like there's any job that's beneath me. You know, if they need to shovel up stuff, I'll shovel up corn with them. If they need a, uh, help on looking over a piece of equipment because they don't understand it. Hey, I'll look over it, you know. Right. And that's just just like what I do now in my part time with with you is training people on warranty, training service advisors, you know. Since I work, my work schedule allows it. Right. And so I decided, hey, this is where what I enjoy. I mean, I guess that's what, uh, you know, my legacy, I guess, would be. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Is teaching and instructing, showing people how, you know, stuff that you've learned along the way. It's a way you pass in that torch kind of along. Yeah. Um, but no, that's really awesome. You know, as far as the fact that you got picked as a leader, like you got selected out, not because you're looking for an authoritative role, but because people will believe in you, believe in like your direction, your understanding of stuff. And yeah, that general knowledge. So. Yeah. You know, and I had applied it several different times. Uh, before I got it, you know, and I just looked at it, you know, I've used your saying, you know, don't be better, be better. Right. Just kind of go with the flow. Just uh, trying to figure out, do some self-reflection on why didn't I get it? You know, is it not the time? Was there, there's a reason yeah. for everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. And stuff, it, it happens when it's supposed to happen and things will just kind of go. Yeah. And so from there, uh, I had rebuilt uh, since, I, you know, we're all into cars. Oh yeah, the car business. You know, so anything, even, even though you're not in the car business, you still got it in your blood, and you still obviously it's still a part of you. Yeah, and anything with a motor, for that matter. I mean, if it goes fast, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm in. You know, yeah, you know. So I decided to rebuild a '65 Chevelle. Uh, it took me five and a half years. I did it when I was on, you know, my days off. I didn't have a lot of time, but. It, it kept me at home, kept me out of trouble, kept my mind off things just because, you yeah. know, my work schedule, family's at, you know, school or, or work or whatever. Right. So I decided to do that in my spare time. And like I said, it took me five and a half years. And then I got to the point where I could finally drive it around. I hadn't been ran for, uh, I don't know how long the guy before me had had it. I mean, he ended up passing away when I got it, before I got it. And... I bet it was probably hadn't been on the road for 20, 30 years plus, you know. So I finally got it running. I drove it around the block with no windows, hanging onto the A pillar, sitting on sitting on a bucket, <laughs> uh, sitting on a um, clay pigeons and whatever you know, clay pigeons in a like a milk crate, you know, 
that's what I had to drive. You know, hell, I almost threw it in the ditch on my first. All I was doing was taking around the block, but I didn't know what to expect. So I did that, and then, uh, you know, had that restored. You know, our uncle uh, painted it for me, which I'm most appreciative of. They did an excellent job. I mean, I took it to shows and got uh, second place my first one. Not that it was trophy hunting, but it kind of was a little, you know, ego Took check. In your cap. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And so then I got first place, and then I got best uh, best paint out of 120 plus cars. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. And those people, you know, you want to talk about click? You yeah, know, they were, you know, the old timers have spent a lot of time on it, which I had too. But you know, maybe they think that you know it's uh, bought not built, you know, right? Uh, kind of attitude, and so. Uh, I was done with it. I wanted some good products. A guy that I was on the fire service with uh, years ago, his brother actually had a 64 Chevelle. And I thought, okay, he's got a Chevelle. And I asked him, you know, what products do you use? Yeah. And he was like, well, I use Adam's products. And I was like, well, I want something really good, you know, or are they just kind of like your big box store type stuff? And so he's like, no, they're really good. So I bought some. Kept buying, I kept buying, and then Christmas of twenty nineteen, I'd asked for a bunch of car cleaning products, Adams car cleaning products. Yes, yeah. and we're sitting around. I mean, you, you're there, and um, Rachel and everybody and family gathering. And he said, "Hey, how come you just don't sell their products?" I guess I oh, should. I never really even thought about it. Yeah. I mean, I have some extra time, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my time. Right. Cars built, you know, you're going to car shows, that sort of thing, keeping it clean. And yeah, one good product. So then I was like, well, I guess I'll call them up. You know, oh, I'll see what's out there. Shoot my shot. If you yeah. So I decided to give them a call and they said, well, you need a business name. I'm like, well, hell, I don't even know what's a business name, you know. So I was like, well, I'm riding around in my car, shiny as shit. You know, people are gawking out. So, you know what? Ride and shine. You know? Yeah. And then I was like, well, I'm from the Midwest. So ride and shine Midwest, I guess, is what I'll come up with. Yeah. And so it kind of stuck. And, you know, I called a lawyer. They got my business name all set up, tax ID, the whole thing, you know, because I had no clue what, what to do. Right. Yeah, you got your so I got to... Uh, my information back my from the lawyer about my business. And I contact him, hey, you know, look at me. You know, here I am. And, you know, I didn't know what the kind of process I went through. So I had sent uh, them over an application as well. And then they did a phone interview, reviewed the application. And it took quite a while, you know, um, just because they were in the transition of doing different people. Then they came back and said, hey, you've been approved for, to be a distributor. For Adams Products in Iowa. Yeah. And I thought, wow, okay. Nice. You know, I can go to car shows. I can sell product that I know works. Yeah, absolutely. People are going to ask you, you know, like, wow, how do you keep this thing so shiny? You know, like, what have you done? I mean, it's obviously a great quality paint job, great quality car, you know, but also what kind of products do you use on it? Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, hey, this is, this is a game changer. You know, yeah. I have a passion for cars. I have detailed cars, uh, my own cars, bikes, boats, snowmobiles, yeah. whatever you name it, throughout my whole life. And I thought, well, hey, this would be a good opportunity to to do. So I started selling products, you know. Uh, then the whole COVID thing happened. Yeah. And then, you know, the car shows kind of were null and void. You know, you're not supposed to hang out with people. So really had to change kind of my business model of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I figured, you know, I'll go back to my roots and start detailing cars. You know, I'll detail cars with products that I know work. Right. So I started detailing the cars, even out of my garage, you know, which was a complete pain in the ass because I was having them move people, you know, move my cars out, to move their cars in, you know, people in and out of the house. And I thought, well, you know, I just need a place that I can call my own. Yeah. So I had an opportunity to buy a building. So I bought a building. Um, and, you know, from there, you know, gave me a lot more 
opportunity to clean, you know, various vehicles, boats now, uh, you know, UTVs, cars, trucks, motorhomes. Yeah. Fifth wheels, whatever you name. Got a whole lot of a whole lot more space, and it's not an interruption or disruption at home now. No, and I can now I can leave work at work, you know, leave home at home. Yeah, you know, and not try to balance the two and feel like I always have to do stuff. So. Right. Um, you know, a building is really nice. I've been very told nice. It's, yeah, it's been told it's a sanctuary for cars. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, probably a Cool ass man cave, as some people have put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Nate, tell us a little bit about your detail facility. I understand you got a new shop that opened up that you built. Where is that located, and what can people expect if they stop out there? So it's in Walford, Walford, Iowa. Uh, just right outside of Fairfax, which is just right outside of Cedar Rapids, maybe twelve minutes, if that. Um, you expect to to if you come to my shop. I mean, I keep it pristine. I mean, like I said, some people think it's a sanctuary. Uh, you know, I have keep everything from towels, good quality towels, cleaning products from interior, exterior, waxes, cleaners, buckets, you know, wash mitts, whatever you may need, whether it's your boat, your bike, motorhome, anything, you know, we have it all so we can clean it, whether you want to do it yourself or if you'd like for us to do it, we can clean it. Um, I really enjoy ceramic coating. Uh, for some of you that don't know, ceramic coating uh, is a productive layer on top of your paint, on top of your clear coat. It's very time consuming and a lot of work goes into it to do it right from what I understand. Yeah. And, you know, you can have on average, I'm just going to throw it out there, maybe 10 to 12 hours on a car, you know, to do it right. Yeah. But, you know, the, the shine and the, the paint protection and everything else that you get off it is 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 top notch. Yeah, from what I understand, it's kind of like uh, putting like a layer of enamel over your teeth or something like that. It helps protect it, helps, you know, like clean it, you know, keep everything from tarnishing it and whatnot. Yeah, and some of it, and, you know, it's scratch resistant. Um, it's not scratch proof, but, you know, if you have bird droppings, I mean, we went on Crown Rally, people were making fun of me because I had bugs sliding all over my paint. Yeah, you know, Well, your stickers weren't even <laughs> staying on your car. <laughs> yeah, the stickers were blowing off, you know. And, uh, you know, that's really where you're going to get the most bang for your buck, especially if you're going to keep your car. Oh, you yeah. Know? Uh, you know, you're looking at some of these vehicles that are out there. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, 10,000, 20, 100,000, 200,000. I mean, if you plan on keeping your car and the paint's in good condition, uh, you know, the one thing about it is you want to get it as close to perfect as possible. Yeah, and then get the paint there. corrected and then go through and do your ceramic coat. Yeah. And so from there, I mean, it just, there's a little bit of maintenance to it, but you don't have to wax anymore if you don't want to. I mean, you can layer it. That's not a problem, but you're really wasting your time at that point. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you really want to protect your investment. I mean, you can do it to UTVs. You can do it to boats. You can do it to motorcycles. I mean, uh, Steve's motorcycle, he was, you know, oh, yeah. uh, just mind-blowing because, you know, he can get the bugs off and not spend, you know, hours upon end trying to scrub bugs off the front of his motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he was, yeah, just kind of astonished by how easy that thing is to clean. He's like, they just wipe right off. Yeah. And like I said, it's it, that is truly probably, I mean, technology has gone uh, a, long know, a long way from, <laughs> you know, the old wax days where you're rubbing it on as hard as you can or, or putting it on and hopefully not pacing up and then rubbing as hard as you can to get it off. Yeah. You know. Uh, Trying to dig it out of trim and everything else that you get it on and just, yeah. I mean, you can ceramic coat. Glass, you know, we ceramic coat glass, plastic. Yeah, you do um, wheels. You wheels, do. you know, you can do brake calipers. You can do suspension. You can do your wheel liners, bed covers. I mean, you name it. The only thing it doesn't stick to is rubber, but there is products out there that, you know, you can give it more protection so it can give that wet look for a lot longer. Yeah. Is that like graphene coating stuff or the... Yeah, you can do graphene, tire shine, uh, that really, but... 
you know, you really want to clean the surface. The, the main thing is, is cleaning the surface with the right products, getting it so it will adhere and stay on there as long as possible. Yep. You know, the glass, you know, people always talk about these other chemical, you know, other products like I use rain -X or whatever. I mean, it, this rain -X only lasts for so long. You know, and if you're using your wipers and it's an alcohol base, it'll deteriorate that a lot faster. Where as the ceramic yeah. coating, I mean, it, I get people, you know, be driving down the interstate and we'll have a downpour and everybody slam on their brakes because they can't see, you know, and you think about safety where I'm not even using the wipers because it's just blowing off there. Yeah. And I don't recommend not using your wipers, but you don't have to. That's, it I mean, beats the wiper, off that fast. Then, yeah. yeah. And the rain sensor wipers don't under, you know, goes off of how much water is on that surface. Well, and it, sometimes it'll go real fast and then it'll they slow down because it, did, it gets often. confused as shit. Yeah. You know, uh, but there's a lot of benefits to it. You know? Yeah. And especially if you're, but the one thing about it is you're going to want to hand wash, you know, after you ceramic a coat at home or take it to the car wash like you've done with yourself. Yeah. You want to. Bucket you, clean you that. Yep. You know, and you can, you know, what? hey, you want to do something, you know, to kind of liven up, but you can take it through a, a car wash, a br you know, a brushless one. But you got to remember that people that, these companies that have these car washes are doing the cheapest chemicals possible. They're using it, you know, as least amount as possible as well. Right. You know, and just trying to make your... They don't have water clean. softeners. They don't have a lot of the other stuff. I mean, it's not... Just quick in and out, spread off, make it look decent, sandy down the road. Yeah. And, you know, to get a good quality wash, do it at home. I mean, yeah. You can get stuff so you don't get the water spots. If you're going to do it, you know, uh, out in the sun, you know, pH neutral soaps, you know, and making sure you have zero um, uh, TDS in your water, which you can get, like I said, uh, we sell those. Yeah. You know, so you're not going to get any water spots. You're getting the purest water possible. Yeah, so you're not, it's not drying and getting you hard water spots, yeah. soap spots, that sort of thing. You know, we're just simply washing it in the early, early morning in the shade or late, late evening. Yeah, you know, and after the sun's water. gone down, not beating on it. Yeah, because then you're going to get etching in the paint, and you're just really yeah. not going to get the best quality when right. it comes to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's been a, a journey. You know, I never thought I would be a business owner, let alone – Selling products, yeah. Never, never thought it. You know, even as a kid, I mean, and I, I enjoy cleaning cars. Yeah, we always have. I mean, we always used to detail cars. I remember Dad working in the car business even when we were young and getting paid ten, twenty bucks to do car washes for people, and we could make some cash on like a Saturday, <laughs> yeah. you know, doing things. And one of my first jobs was a customer satisfaction car washer and my job was to wash it in the middle of a parking lot with a water tank and a hose and i got sunburned as shit and <laughs> spent a lot of time <laughs> out there but you know it was always enjoyable i mean we always took pride in cleaning our cars and taking care of our stuff um and adam's products do have a very nice you know like lineup of stuff it smells damn good too and it works um, so that's really cool that you got into it, get to use that stuff, still do something that's in your blood and that, you know, sparks your interest and yeah, that's way cool. And the, the best thing about it is, you know, it kind of happened you know, they say the right place, right time, you know, uh, I'm the last one that they have set up as a independent. Um, so that is great. You know, they don't take anybody else as far as I know. From yeah, no more applications. So I kind of got in at the right time and. And like I said, I figured, you know, since I sell the product, why not demonstrate it, you know, and sell it, or excuse me, do work with customer cars, you know. Uh, we have a five-star rating on Facebook. We have a 4.8 because on Google because somebody didn't know how to use Google Maps and I've never even done business with them. You know, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, you but that's the haters going to hate, you know. Yeah, your work's going to speak for itself, yeah. and that's what makes you stand apart on there. You know, and uh, I guess, yeah, everybody's got a detail product. Everybody's a detailer. You know, I know you've said it's kind of like a tattoo artist. I mean, everybody's got their own spin on stuff. You find what works for you, but you go to somebody that you trust, and you've got.
got a good loyal client base and those that was that no no you know yeah. you know you come to me i'm going to treat it like it's my own i mean i'm going to tell you to be a straight shooter hey this is what i i can't do but this is what i can do you know there's a lot of people that say oh i can get all these things out i can do this and touch up this and and buff that out you know it's not going to be the case yeah you know you're, you're not going to let your hopes down on your what you think the expectations are i mean I'll shoot to you straight. Yeah. Yep. Give you a realistic expectation and and try and beat it. And I know you're very, you know, uh, let's say particular, <laughs> yeah, with, particular like your, yeah. with your stuff. I mean, I know like your shop's clean and obviously you go to a detail shop and you want a clean car, you expect the shop and everything else to be clean and looking good. I mean, it's, it's kind of your quote unquote, like operating room, if you will, like what you're working in. You don't want it to be filthy. And, um, Obviously, you want your product and everything to come out good. If you're doing ceramic coating, you want to make sure the environment is clean and you're not getting that stuff sealed, you know, dust and whatnot sealed into it. And obviously, have good lighting so you can see that you got quite the lighting set up there. Well, the uh, the the one LED light is eighteen or twenty foot by like thirty foot. I mean, the thing's massive. I mean, yeah, this thing is uh, took. I got, well, without your help, not including your time, 24 hours into hanging these up and adjusting them and, and everything else, and then your time on top of it, and then obviously Janita, you know, yeah. too. I mean, it's it's quite the, uh, the ordeal. It's like damn near like your tanning bed. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, you got to wear sunglasses in there, you know, if you're going to be in there on full blast. Yeah, with every, yeah. everything. Just watch that, that electric meter spin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, like I said, I wanted a place where somebody can feel comfortable coming in. You know, yeah. I treat everybody like like family, you know, and I guess yeah. the customer service and speaks for itself, you know. Yeah, so you got the customer service, you got the facility, you got the detail and products. You know, it sounds like you kind of got everything wrapped up into the best of all the worlds. Then. Yeah, you know, and the one thing that I tell people, you know, is I never thought I would be in this spot, you know. Life throws you a lot of different curveballs. You really got to decipher and figure out the pros and cons of everything. Yeah. You know, and truly be the captain of your own ship. And, you know, even in sometimes, you know, even in my story, you know, sometimes you got to go backwards to go forward. You know, you can't look at it and dwell on, well, I wish I would have been there. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. Yeah. You know, you can't look at it as regrets. So you just look at it as opportunity. We got opportunity to to do better. Look at an opportunity to to grow yourself. Yeah. You know? Or maybe you're supposed to take a different direction than the one that you had your heart set on. You know, you know, and it makes you appreciate really where you're where you've been. Yeah. You know. Uh you know and and do the best possible. You know, deliver great customer service, deliver great product, you know, uh, you know, in my case, good detailing. Yeah. And and people will return. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, just be true to yourself. Yeah. Well, and that's one of those things that everybody that has done business with you, has gotten their car detailed, buys the product, does that stuff, they know. I mean, it's damn good that they're hard-pressed to find better. You've done your research. You know, it's all that I use exclusively on my car because of your recommendation and because it does work. Yeah. You know, but I knew you knew your shit, like, from – having your Malibu and, you know, the time and everything that went into that. You know, I, I was reluctant on using stuff because, you know, not from Adams, but, you know, going to the store because, you know, big box stores, you get in the same thing where you don't necessarily know where you're buying. There's nobody there to, to really go over any products with you. Educate you on what yeah. it's supposed to do, how to use it properly. Yeah. You can read the back of it and say, hey, okay, but, is it really going to work? Is it really going to do what I want it to do? Right. I guess that's what sets me apart from the rest of the people, even here in in town. You know, you can come see me. You know, want to hang out, have a soda. You know, talk about some products. Hey, come see me. You yeah, know? give you a recommendation yeah. on if you want to do it yourself. If you want to have you do it, you know the. Yeah, that's really cool. You got a nice little showroom, like with your product and everything and display, and then a really good workspace. Yeah, have people 
if they can, you know, just call, email. We'll set up at a time so I can make sure I devote the time to you. Uh, because, yeah. like I said, I am a busy person. So that way I can give you my undivided attention. Yeah. We appreciate you guys watching. If you guys have any comments or anything, you can put it down below. We'll include all of Nate's contact information to his business and his Facebook and social media pages. But otherwise, until next time, see you guys later. Thank you.